I don't like shoveling snow. My back bothers me and I no longer need to be doing it. So I built a snow melt system for my driveway and sidewalk. I knew I was going to do this when I built my house and made provisions for it. A sample of the insulation used under the concrete slab. It's a half inch thick, has an aluminum foil layer. You need a thermal break between your slab and the earth. You want to keep that heat in the concrete slab. And that foil layer is there to reflect the radiant energy back up into the slab. Half inch PEX tubing was used and installed on 12 inch centers. Six inch by six inch wire mesh was used to serve as a grid to help align the PEX and the PEX was zip tied to the wire mesh to hold it in position. The concrete slab is five inches thick. The tubing needs to be exactly in the center of the concrete thickness. Rebar chairs were placed under the wire mesh which correctly positioned the tubing in the concrete. Half inch steel rebar was placed on top of the tubing on two foot centers in both directions. The tubing could float to the surface of the wet cement. Being tied to the wire mesh and with the rebar on top of the tubing prevents that from happening. 1,431 foot of half inch PEX was used in the driveway and sidewalk and split into eight separate circuits or loops. Each loop is one continuous length. There are no couplings or splices in the concrete. The tubing was pressurized to 100 psi to make sure there were no leaks and the pressure was maintained and monitored during the concrete pour to immediately indicate if it was punctured by the concrete workers. The pressure was reduced to 20 psi before the concrete started to set. You want hand tooled joints. No saw cuts here. The entire system is filled with a mixture of ethylene glycol so it won't freeze. Computer design was used to determine the required flow rate based on heat transfer. Tubing pressure drop and pump performance curves are used to select an acceptable circulation pump. A snowmelt system is just another form of a radiant heat system. In this case I use an on-demand water heater. Fluid is circulated through the eight loops at eight gallons a minute. Using a smaller pump, a portion of the return fluid is routed through the on-demand heater and re-injected into the circulation flow stream. Flow control valves and flow meters are used to balance the flow throughout the system. Concrete does not like to change dimension quickly, so you need to very slowly warm it up so you will not crack it. Dilution tables are referenced to determine the relationship between return fluid temperature, heated fluid injection rate, and the expected supply side fluid temperature. These tables have proven to be quite accurate. If you want to completely clear the driveway, once you start the system, you need to leave it running until all the snow is gone. Otherwise, it will refreeze and you'll spend money warming everything again. You are trying to melt a large volume of snow or ice. It requires a lot of gas and it takes a fairly long time, but it works well. This is a fairly expensive system to operate. While running, it is about the same as heating three or four houses, but it is cheaper than the doctor bills and it is certainly cheaper than a heart attack. The first thing that people usually say when they see this is, man, that's complicated. And really it's not. You have a circulation pump that's circulating eight gallons a minute through the concrete. You have a smaller pump that's delivering usually one to one and a half gallons a minute to the on-demand heater. The heated fluid gets mixed back into the flow stream and you have the supply fluid that's going back out to the concrete. This gauge tells me what temperature the fluid is coming back from the concrete, the heated fluid temperature, and this one gives me the mix or supply fluid temperature. I have a digital readout from the automatic heater that tells me gallons per minute in temperature as well. Supply manifold, individual isolation valves for each loop, return manifold, these are flow control valves and flow meters. These were used initially to balance the flow throughout the system. Once balanced, there's no reason to mess with those again. And an expansion tank to allow for the expansion and contraction of the fluid in the system. Switches for the two pumps, probably can't hear that one. This one, circulating pump. Air bleed valve, pressure relief valve, which hopefully will never go off. And a lot of these valves are 
isolation and zone valves for when you're filling the system and trying to get the air out when you initially fill the system with glycol. We have an expansion tank down here, and this is a header tank. This holds excess fluid, and this is pressurized to 15 pounds pressure to just keep a slight pressure on the whole system. Turn on the electric, turn on the gas. Circulation pump, heater pump. You can hear that the on-demand heater is starting to uh, go through its process of firing up. Have a digital readout of the temperature. That's telling me I'm pumping at one gallon a minute. And this will tell me that currently this is 122 degree water that's coming out of here. When we start off, Let's say our return temperature is 30 degrees at one gallon a minute. If I heat that to 120 and mix it with the other fluid, I'll have about 40 degree fluid going out to the concrete. I'll look up here at my digital readout. It tells me I'm doing one gallon a minute. As this starts to increase, when I see that my return temperature has stabilized somewhat, I'll go back up here, turn on my digital readout, and I'll slowly increase this to, and now that's about one and a half gallons a minute. And I'll let that stabilize. And we'll keep going with that until I can see that the snow is progressively melting. You do not want to heat that concrete too quickly. There's a lot of investment out there. You don't want to crack that concrete. When I'm done, Reset the system to one gallon per minute. I turn off the heater, and it takes a while for it to go through its cool down routine. It can take a minute or so. And then I turn off the main circulation pump. On demand heater is finally shut down. We can turn off the electric. Shut off the gas. I believe in unplugging things if they're not being used. 